ladies and welcome back to KMS and I'm your girl Kimberly Marissa and today we are going to talk about I'm having a real problem with so many YouTubers, resellers, encouraging people to buy liquidation and I'm here to tell you why you should not buy liquidation. For most people you should not be buying liquidation and even for those who can afford it just be very mindful <laughs> of buying liquidation. So we're about to get in, into it. And I'm here bringing you information. Of course, this is my perspective. And that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I don't like long um, spiels of excuse of why you're bringing your opinion to a platform that's all about opinion. So we're not going to go any further down that road. Uh, I do hope that you enjoy what I'm about to talk about. And if you do, I pray that you will like, I pray that you will subscribe. I pray all those things. Um, so yes, I am a reseller. For those of you who do not know, I have a reselling business. I have been reselling for many years and I do it from the perspective of a fashion insider, a fashion expert, <laughs> and also someone who um, has a degree in business as well as, um, you know, just wanting to bring to the reseller community more of a business perspective of reselling. And I think this will aid many new resellers uh, because there's a lot of noise out there. And a lot, of, a lot of people are putting up a lot of things that sound real jazzy, but we got to think about the business aspect because at the end of the day, when you have a transaction where money is exchanged, whether it's on the internet or not, you bought goods and you're selling it to somebody, you are doing business. And so there are business things that have to be addressed. This is not just a community where we all hanging out and making money. No, that would be great if it was, but you will get hurt. That's why you see videos up with resellers talk about, I quit this platform and I quit that platform and I quit altogether because they have gotten burned. And honestly, I believe when I hear their stories, I feel bad because I think that they just followed a lot of advice. That was terrible advice. <laughs> so, what do I mean? Well, I have four points today. What do I mean by you should not buy liquidation? And yes, I think a lot of these YouTubers I see are putting up liquidation videos left and right. There's one YouTuber, I mean, I'm not gonna name any names, but they're doing a, re they're doing a liquidation video every week. I mean, really? <laughs> liquidation costs thousands of dollars typically you're buying liquidation every week and you just started your reselling journey and when i mean just started reselling journey, this is someone who's only been reselling for i believe about a year and you're oh goodness we got to get into it we have to get into this okay so the first point the first thing i want to discuss and talk about is the reason why I don't advocate many people buying liquidation and even when they do get a liquidation to take into consideration the margins because when you buy liquidation, typically, especially for us resellers, that we buy things at the thrift stores, you buy things at the bins. For those of you who don't know about the bins, it is the Goodwill outlet. Uh, everything is thrown into a big blue bin, <laughs> well, several of them, and you pay by the pounds. And so that's why in the really selling community, we call it the bins. But it's amazing because, of course, if you're paying by the pound, you're getting things pennies on the dollar, meaning that, you know, every every uh, state and every city has their own, um, you know, pound uh, price. It's not universal. So, you know, some places are $2 and change, I've heard. Some places are just a buck. Some places are a dollar and change. But either way, if you're getting an item, especially if it's less than a pound, I mean, imagine you get two items that are less than a pound, you're probably paying a dollar and change. That works with like maybe 60 cents each. You know, and I'm just doing overall math, simple math, just to give you the gist of what it is for those who don't know. But anyway, so the margins are amazing. That's why many of us get into this. One of the reasons is because it's just amazing margins. I mean, my accountant, when I first got him and he saw what I was, you know, able to make and he saw the cost of goods, he was blown away because in retail period and also in almost no other industry are the margins this ridiculous. That being said, I have heard the argument 
that the reason why people are buying these liquidation palettes is because it's so much easier because it's getting brought to your home. It's getting brought right to you so that it saves you time. It saves you um, transportation costs. Um, and they feel like that it's worth it. But this is the thing with margins. Yes, time is important. I'm the first one to say that. And yes, it is a gr you do pay for the convenience of getting something delivered to you. But remember, getting liquidation is not the same as buying an Amazon item that you could have gone to your local Target or maybe to whatever down the block. You could have gone to your grocery store and yet you get your items delivered. The reason why it's not the same is because you're picking out those items yourself. You have the full understanding of the expectation of what the item is that you should be receiving, as well as you are able to select it yourself. The only thing that you didn't do was actually physically carry it from that location to the location that you want to deliver it to. That's basically it. Liquidation is not the same. Oh, my office lights, they're on a timer. <laughs> they go off. Let me see if I move around. Ah, ah. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> They're back, but I'm not gonna get up again. So if it gets dark, please excuse me. Um, and it's the weekend here where, you know, this is gonna be posted on Monday, but it's technically Friday. It is the weekend and I'm still at the office. Oh gosh. <laughs> anyway, but yes, so your margins are more not just about the convenience, but it's also the fact that with liquidation, even if it's manifested, which means that you get to see everything that's in your palette, liquidation, the nature of liquidation is that they're going to bulk up that palette for the numbers because liquidation is a game of price point with numbers, meaning that you're going to get maybe 200 items, let's say. You're going to 200 items, let's say, for a thousand bucks. Okay, so yeah, that's amazing. You get 200 items, you spend a thousand dollars, but you don't get to pick those 200 items, and they're gonna bulk that palette up to make that 200 count. So, what do I mean by that? They're gonna give you honestly, you're lucky, honestly, sometimes if you get 50% that are really great finds and phenomenal and great flips and all of that. Typically, it's gonna be a quarter of the palette are gonna be maybe amazing items. Then it's going to be broken up between another maybe 25-30%. And that's going to be items that, yes, they will sell. <laughs> but they will not sell at a premium. They are things that probably, if you were selecting yourself, you probably would not have put in. But you may not be mad that you got it and you'll lock them up like a here. People will lock them up together. Uh, you'll maybe sell them to a buy, sell, trade. You know, all the kind of things you want to do. But they wouldn't have been your first choice. But there's still things that you can still flip and make some profit on. But then, after you have that, let's say, 50%, maybe 60 65% that you're happy with, you, are, you, you're, you can do something with, you're going to have a good 30%, 30%, 35%, 40% of stuff that was just put in there to get up the number for the liquidator. So that means that you're going to have items that includes one, almost every liquidation, there's going to be some margin of um, items that are just not sellable. They're damaged and they're damaged to the point where they're most likely not sellable. Within that same amount of items that you that are not <laughs> things that are really going to make you any money uh, are going to be items that are fillers they call them fillers so let's say you order a palette of winter designer merchandise well the filler in that may be a whole bunch of cashmere hats and cashmere gloves now it's amazing great i love cashmere i love natural fibers i love cashmere and they will sell but the fact that you have maybe 30 of them in magenta maybe not so much and that's how liquidation works. They're gonna give you, I mean, just think about it. This is the stuff that the liquidator bought from a store 
that already tried to sell it. And these stores that are trying to sell it, they're big stores with many locations. They're not small stores, not mom and pops. These are national retailers, okay? They couldn't sell it. So now they could, and the reason they couldn't sell it is because in retail, which I'm gonna do a separate video on because again, I come from that world. You have to understand that everything has its shelf life and there's a reason why it has a shelf life. But I'm not gonna go down that path, that's another video. But I'm just bringing that to the point of why you have to think about your margins because if you have those 200 items, right, and you spend a thousand bucks for them, okay? So what is that? 200, that's what, uh, $50 a pop? Because it was supposed to be a designer box. But out of that, you only got maybe 30 items that are really gonna sell for over 50. You see what I'm saying? So, and then if they sell for over 50, by how much? Because that brings me to my next point. How much are you gonna get? Because the thing is, that's happening in the reseller community with all these liquidation YouTube videos about who they're using it and what they bought and let me show you what I got. And <laughs> the stuff is still up for sale <laughs> on the liquidators platform. How much will your stuff actually sell for when all of this exposure, <laughs> and I'm not saying we should hide information, but people are stopping doing their own due diligence by trying to cut the cost. Let me say it again. Many resellers are falling into two categories. There are those who don't want to do their own due diligence. And what is the due diligence? It is actually researching a liquidator for yourself getting, being mindful of how much you're willing to put at risk and then taking the risk, okay? That is how it should go. Not because people don't wanna share things, but it's because it brings me to my next point. Oversaturation. Liquidation now in terms of what resellers are using and it's not even about liquidation and honestly this is something that's plaguing the reseller community and this is something else I'm going to do a video on because there's actually in-depth information that has to go along with why oversaturation is horrible and this exposure of everything that everyone's buying is horrible. It's because if you get a rag and bone, let's say rag and bone coat, right? You bought it, you're showing everyone you got it, you're showing everyone where you got it from, you're telling everybody how much you paid for it. You may sell that rag and bone coat, but maybe, what? You have eight of them, let's say. Let's say you got eight of them in your lot. Amazing. You're making, let's say, after everything's said and done, let's say it costs you $50, $50 a pop. Uh, let's say you sell it for 100 bucks. You made $50, ah, and sell the fees and the shipping. So let's say you go on Poshmark, the fee is 20%. What's 20% off of 50? I'm doing this in my head right. 20% off of 100, and honestly, it's $20 off, so that's $80. So now that $100 coat that sold $100 actually put in your pocket 80 bucks. Now we're not including any shipping discounts, but 80 bucks. So 80 minus the 50 you pay, that's $30. Now you may say, ah, oh, $30. I'm happy with that. That's a great ASP for many people. I love to get sell things that are going to put in my pocket at least 30 or over dollars. But the caveat to that is, how many items do you have in your lot that are going to also go along with that? Because remember, you may have 10 of those clothes, right? All right, let's say you get a 30, you made $30 a pop after everything said and done off of each of them. That's 300 bucks, but you spent $1,000. You spent $1,000 on the palette. And yes, you were able to breeze through those coats. And yes, they made you money. And yes, you got a $30, you know, ASP when everything was said and done. But those were only accounted for 10 out of your 200. So that's what I say about the oversaturation and the lower margins. Your margins are often lower because you're already paying a premium, yes, because it's being delivered to you, and yes, because you're getting a certain amount of quantity in one shot. But also, because of the oversaturation of so many YouTubers now talking about liquidation in terms of in too much detail, and also selling from the same sources. If I see another reseller selling from Nordstrom Rack, how many, you act like Nordstrom Rack is like, what, um, 
I don't know, like M&M's or like Coca-Cola where they have like, like, you know, hundreds of flavors, you know, international and everything. No. They are a retailer that has a buying team that has specifically bought these items. And they're in almost all the stores. So when you buy the liquidation and they buy the liquidation and the other person buys the liquidation, everybody's not saying the same thing. Oh, no. You know, <laughs> thank you. Um, everyone's buying the liquidation. And then here comes down the price. The price starts coming down. I'm telling you, you gotta be mindful. This is why liquidation is not for everyone. And especially for newbies, please don't start buying liquidation. I know some of y'all like the, um, the allure of the fact that yes, merchandise is coming to you and it looks amazing because these YouTubers are talking about, look what I got, look what I got. Oh, we paid this much money for it and I got these and these are gonna sell for this much. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yes, but YouTube itself is a huge platform with hundreds, millions of people viewing it. And no, there are not hundreds and millions of resellers I don't, I don't know how many resources there are in the world, but in America, who knows? But, <laughs> but the fact is, is that it's such a huge pool. And now that huge pool full of so many people are now trying to go to the pond. And what's the pond? Nordstrom liquidation. What's the pond? Box liquidation. What's the pond? Um, quick lots. What's the, these are ponds. <laughs> and everyone from the ocean is trying to come to the pond. So what do you think is going to happen to the people that are buying these items? Eventually, they're going to get slower in sales and smaller margins and smaller margins. <sighs> that brings me to the next point, which is buying liquidation also can create, create for you dead stock, dead stock in your inventory. Why? Because again, it goes back to the fact that you're buying liquidation with fillers. And if you don't have already a game plan to deal with those fillers, that's gonna be a problem sometimes because you'll then put it off or you'll just list them to list them. And, you know, it's one thing that, like any store, every store throughout the world will never sell through all of their merchandise at one time. Even Apple is stocked. They have things that sells, get sold out. But as a company, they constantly are putting out products that they need and, and want to have and have available. And on top of that, everything doesn't sell at the same rate. So yes, it is fine and it's natural, a part of business that you will always find, even if you pick it yourself, there will always be items that just miss the mark somehow, some way, or just they take longer to move. But what I'm talking about is the fact that you did not even get to pick these fill up items. These are thrown in the boxes. And the reason they're there is because they are not the most desirable items. And you know what happens with those items? They are the ones that you get a lot of quantity in. You get a whole lot of quantity <laughs> with the fillets. Because again, how many people really want a magenta cashmere um, beret? I mean, how many? Maybe two, maybe three, but I don't know if it's a whole bunch. Oh, the light went out again. Well, we're up to our last point. <laughs> so stick with me. The last point I wanted to make is that even for how great it is to be able to get, you know, so much quantity at one time, and still, you know, when you go on these liquidation sites, you know, it'll say that you're getting, you're paying only $10 a pop for each item. You're paying $15 or even a dollar and change each item. Like however they work out their map. And that's always because, you know, it's how much they're charging you with how much they're providing. And again, liquidation, typically you're getting hundreds of items. Okay. So yes, from the bare bones of it, when you're pressing click and pay, it looks like, wow, I'm getting 750 items. And it says it only costs me, you know, 375 each piece. That's amazing. But you're paying like with shipping and freight, you know, because you have to pay to actually have it delivered and delivery of liquidation is not cheap. It's typically hundreds of dollars. It's not like, a, it's not, again, like buying from Amazon. 
it's hundreds of dollars, even if it's local to you, you're still going to be paying. You're not going to get it this for like $29.99 shipping. This you're going to be paying money. So you have to add that into your cost. And then, yes, it's bringing that item up. But then you may say, oh, no, but still, I'm getting so many items, Kim. I'm getting so many items. It's, it's nominal. It's nominal. So how can you say that, you know, I can overspend? The reason you can overspend is because, one, again, you didn't get to pick the items yourself. You may, again, be able to, you know, see the manifest, which is the whole list of what's included. And for those of you that are buying liquidation, unmanifested, where you don't even have an inkling of what's inside that, please, please leave that only to the big boys. And what I mean by the big boys are those who have money that they can openly willingly say not that they want to but just that it's not going to disrupt disrupt them if at the end of the day it's a loss because you do not know what you're getting you're hopeful but you do not know what you're getting okay and the problem with getting unmanifested is there are no returns there is no, oh my gosh, I didn't know that this was 60% broken merchandise or, or, or damaged merchandise. Oh, I hope she didn't. I'm so sorry, people, but the cleaner. <laughs> I have my, like, shake, and it's half, but it's on the desk, and I'm like, oh, I hope she didn't throw my shake away because I really still want it. <sighs> okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> but anyway, um... The problem is, is that how you can overspend is because you didn't get to choose the merchandise. So why would you overspend? It's not just about what you spend on liquidation, but remember, you have an entire store you, you should be maintaining. So that means, again, within liquidation, oftentimes, yes, the beauty of it and the peril of it is that you're getting multiples. So what happens when you have a multiples of things that you just are not going to move quickly? They are not things that are even sometimes akin to the type of store you have. What do you do then? Because what happens with a lot of them, a lot of people, and I see it happening on YouTube, is then they start getting into the liquidation buzz, or you see them doing these liquidations, and then they're also doing these hauls, and it's like, how much money are you spending in love? Are you, are, you, are you selling as much as you're spending? Because it looks like you're spending seven, eight, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in the month. Are you making that? And I'm saying after all the fees, after everyone has to get paid, after the employees have to get paid, I have to pay, I have to pay all these things before I can honestly, with owning a business, this is a business. I'm not gonna go on a tangent, but this is why I say you can overspend because you're supposed to be maintaining everything. Now maybe you're, you're working solo in your business, but if you're working solo in your business, just the processing of liquidation takes up time. So yeah, you didn't go out and thrift it, but you're processing hundreds of items. Because I see also, I hear and I see, I hear and I see <laughs> these videos of these YouTubers and they're talking about, oh yeah, I got this liquidation palette and it's four boxes and five boxes, all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, I'm still trying to process. I'm trying to get it finished by the weekend. I'm trying to get it finished by next week. I'm trying to get it. And that's the thing. It's like, so did you really, I'm just asking, did you really save that much time? because you are you didn't go out your house you didn't go out yourself to buy the liquidation but especially if you're working solo dolo you still have to process it and maybe you're not used to processing 300 items in one lump sum usually yeah you may buy three four or five hundred items in a month but that's spread out during the weeks this is one shot boom this stuff is sitting here. And then people have to fight the urge to go out and then source. Because my thing is at the end of the day, you have your quantity. And this is where a lot of people are getting into the catch 22 and they're gonna get burned financially. I can see it because they're spending and they're still going out and still sourcing all this stuff. And it's like, but you just got three, 400 items. But then, They'll say, oh, well, a lot of it's multiples. And that's another way you can overspend. Because again, 
you then have to go out and source. Then you must go out and source. You want to know why? Because yes, it's great to have multiples because that means that it's one listing that saves time with, you know, again, you don't have to make multiple listings. So it's like you have maybe 10, 20, whatever of the same item. Awesome. You get five quantities for one one kind of one aspect of work, you know, like you have to just do the listing one time. Great. But at the end of the day, you want to increase the, the not just the quantity, but the variety of your store and your offerings. Because again, I always liken this to when you go out and shop in your store, in any store, a regular store. If you were to go in a store and you only saw 20 items, you would be able to go through that store real quick. And then a lot of times you'll go out just because at the end of the day, it didn't seem to have a big offering. This is the same thing with the algorithm. You have to take into, take into consideration your variety. You think I'm crazy for saying these things? Think about how computers work and how they're programmed. I'm not saying that I know exactly how they have them programmed, but there is a certain logic behind how every company's program their algorithm. Think of your own credit score. You know how you have a better credit score? Oftentimes you have a better credit score. If they call it, you have a, a good mix. You have a good credit mix. It's an algorithm. Stocks. Usually, what's the, what's the sage advice? Regardless of if you want to be an aggressive investor or you want to be um, more of a not so aggressive, aggressive invest, investor, what is the sage advice? diversification this is so true in almost every aspect of our lives in so many different ways and the computers that are now part of our lives in all these different areas also work in tandem with this do not think that these recent platforms don't have their computer systems their algorithms thinking about diversity thinking about and, and analyzing how a store's diversity meets the needs of the customer base that the the algorithm is meant to please. So yes, when you buy the gradation and you get 200 items, those are not 200 unique items. Those may be only 60 unique items. So that means that you don't have 200 items really. You have to understand when you buy the gradation. You may have just 60 SKUs. That's how you have to start thinking about it. That's how you think about it in reach how many SKUs you have. That's why in grocery stores, they care about the SKUs they have. They were like, oh, we have 10,000 SKUs, meaning that you have 10,000 unique items. The algorithm cares about how many unique items you're also listing every day, every week, not just how much quantity. Because if I were to right now, like for instance, a perfect example is this. You try doing your store where you list one item a day, but you have a quantity of 25. See how that will compare to you listing 25 new items every day, unique items every day. You get it? So this is another reason why you can overspend in liquidation because yeah, you spent all the money, you got all the stuff, but you didn't get unique pieces that equal the quantity that you purchased. Many of them are duplicates and triplicates and so on and so on. So <clears throat> I said all that to say, I don't think liquidation is for many people. I also think that you have to be very wise in why you should do it. Now, just, you know, I guess my ending note is if you go into liquidation, and liquidation is good for some. And I think liquidation could be good for all at different times within their business, but it should be very select. You have to understand that buying liquidation is not the same as buying from a distributor. And I think a lot of people get that confused. You know, um, many different stores, grocery stores, all kinds of stores, they buy from a, dis a distributor. But that's not the same as buying liquidation because liquidation is basically you're buying from somebody who's selling to everybody who wants to buy that same item. And if everyone's buying the same item and it's not the best things and it's not specific to your needs, it is what they have and you just either like it or you don't like it. It's how they, and how they package it. You don't get to choose how they pack it. And there's so many aspects of liquidation that I do believe that you should, one, be an advanced seller if you're really going to get into it. And what I mean by advanced is you should be you should be a seller that honestly I feel you should have been in your business for more than a year. The reason I feel that is because one year is not enough to know your know your business or know business. 
I know that may be feel some that'll hurt some people's feelings, but it is not. You know, it is not because and think about you if you were a parent to a child, your first time you were a parent to a child, and your child was one year old. Would you consider yourself a parenting expert? Would you consider yourself to honestly even really understand and know everything about your own child? No, you're the first year. Many times is a blur because everything was new. So if you've only been in your business for a year and you're starting to get your liquidation, you're, everything was new. How do you have any comparison? What, is, what are you even comparing this against for your own self? So, you know, but this is why I do these videos because I truly, I really want to educate you re current resellers, future resellers about the business of reselling, not the friendship of reselling, that's great. That's all great. The people want to be friends and have groups, but the business of reselling, because I feel like there's so much fluff. And also, I want to educate you about the things that you have to think about way before you actually buy the item and way before you decide to quit your job and way before you decide to, you know, even go into the next phase of your business. There are, because at the end of the day, it's a business. And business doesn't change like the wind. Stop following all these YouTubers that are giving you new ideas every week. Every week there's a new idea. One minute there's one, one minute they love selling on the platform, they have a bad month, the next minute they don't wanna sell on the platform. Um, one minute they're doing this in the business, the next minute they change strategy, they're doing this in the business. And they're putting all these videos out and you going up and down, up and down, up and down. Business doesn't work that way. You're supposed to implement things. You have to have a period where you're allowed to have it work out to truly see if it's effective or not. And most things you cannot see if they're effective, honestly, in 30 days. 30 days is just the preliminary. That's why even most jobs that you get hired on, they will give you a, what is it? A, um, I've, been, I've been out of working for people for so long. Um, grace period. <laughs> I even have that. Uh, a grace period of 90 days usually. Why? Because the first 30 days is a blur. People just get in their feet wet. You can't even judge anything unless they do something crazy. You can't judge anything in 30 days. 60 days, like I say, okay. Now that you've seen the 30, let's see how you're able to implement. That's the 60. And then by 90, then we start to see if it's really fitting. If what you wanted a job for and what you expected a job for and what it is are meeting and meeting harmoniously. And that's how you have to do with your business. And I'm not saying your business, you'll know what's going on in 90 days, but the things you want to put into your business, you got to give it at least 90 days. You know, stop with this whole every day. Every every week they're giving these new things on these YouTubers with these resellers. Every, it's always this new stuff. Don't do this, do that. You got this craziness. So, and I say for the big things, I will tell you for the big things, yes, be cautious. A lot of my videos will be talking about how to be cautious because business is no joke, okay? You're playing with your livelihood, you're playing with money. If you're hiring people, you're playing with their lives. You know, like, it's serious business. So, take it seriously, okay? I know some of y'all say y'all hobbyists. Well, if you're a hobbyist, you still have a customer because if you're selling, you, that's still a business transaction. All right, so I hope you guys got something out of this. And until tomorrow, because I do these Monday through Friday. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend when your weekend comes. <laughs> All right, bye.